Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. First things first, no, the windscreen is not in. I'm still trying to work that out. But the first thing I have to get back into is getting that stereo all wired up and done. All right, so last week I got the head unit in exactly where I wanted it and it's uh, looking good. The next step with this is I need to finish running the speaker wires and mounting my tweeters so then I can actually have something to test out this uh, head unit with. All right, so the next thing to do to get the wiring for these speakers done is to work out exactly how I'm going to mount my tweeters. And I want them to be as discreet as possible. I don't want them to stand out, but tweeters only really work in a line of sight. I've worked out the best place to put them is actually in these corner panels in here and mount like this. And this is actually the original piece that I couldn't find in the past. Um, so that's the only one that I haven't actually done with this uh, tartan trim. So first things first is to make up my uh, corner panel to go in there. Okay, the speakers are all in and as discreet as I can make them anyway, so uh, now it's a matter of actually wiring it all up to the head unit and getting this thing actually working, hopefully. Okay, my next job is to start trying to wire this all up. And um, if you're anything like me, the first thing you ever did when you started playing with cars was I put aftermarket stereos in the car and uh, did my own bodgy wiring and all that sort of stuff. So for a lot of you, it's probably suck eggs, but it's generally pretty straightforward to wire up a car. You have your power connections and you have your speaker connections. And usually they are, they, they may come out of the stereo separately, but they're generally the same colors. The gray and white are the front speakers. Purple and green are the rear speakers. They're usually something along those lines. And with the power, the black is always your ground, and then you've got red and yellow. But one of them is always a constant uh, 12 volt power, and the other one is the switched power on the uh, accessories. So um, in this case, it's the, uh, the yellow is the constant 12 volt power. It's pretty straightforward. The blue wires are for um, power antennas and, um, and turning the amp on. Uh, I have neither of those, so they're not necessary for mine. First things first is um, I can connect up my speakers. Two front speakers, let's go. All right, so my next job is to start wiring up the power to the stereo. And First of all, I've gone through and I've managed to find this yellow cable. Didn't seem to be connected. It might have been from the stereo before. It's actually uh, connected to the ignition and it is switched power. So this will turn on when the ignition goes on. There you go. Ignition on, ignition off. And the test light works. I still have some bizarre electrical gremlins that I have no idea what's going on. Hence, whenever the battery's connected, these lights are on. I don't know. I'm going to have to uh, do some more research and find out why that's going on. But for the constant power, I'm going to run a new cable. Okay, so to run my constant power, as I said, in Classic Retrofit's fuse box, there are actually three fuses here that aren't used. And I'm going to use one of these fuses. I'm going to jump the power from the next terminal over to this fuse here, this next fuse, and then run my new wire with a 15 amp fuse on it that I'll put in uh, through to the stereo. All right, moment of truth. Let's um, turn the ignition on and see if it actually works. Hey, we have power. 
All right, let's quickly go over this um, stereo. So what I found, for starters, uh, for some reason the left-hand side speaker is not working, but I can get onto that in a little bit. The other issue I found is that the buttons are switched around. Either way, the cables you can connect either side, so you can have either side doing whatever you like. All right, so the basic layout of the unit is pretty good. It is difficult to navigate through the functions, mostly because it only has these two knobs uh, and the uh, the knobs behind, so you've got to take a little bit to learn it. But if you're holding the opposite knob down for three seconds and go through and have a look at all the different settings, the clock, the beep, the white, green, um, Bluetooth on or off, I like it on, Bluetooth Connect. I can go through and go to my different selections here. So the Bluetooth was quite easy to set up and it works quite well. So um So here I can go through to the uh, the next or the previous song and uh, mute it. So overall, I think it um, I think it looks like a pretty good unit. So I've still got to tidy up this uh, mess of wires under here, and for some reason that speaker's not working. So I'm going to get stuck in and see if I can work out what I've done with that uh, that speaker wire. I don't know why it's not working. We'll soon find out. Speaker's working because I stupidly crossed the wires when I like touched the wires when I was uh, wiring up. Speakers are all working. The, uh, the head units are working really well, and I'm uh, I'm really impressed with it. It picked up the Bluetooth straight away. It plays it quite easily and simply. It's a little difficult, as I said, negotiating through the menu system because it is limited by the uh, amount of buttons on it because it does look like an old stereo, but. Um, I'm really happy. I think it. Uh, I think it. It fits perfectly. It sounds good. It uh, connects the Bluetooth nicely. So. All right. So my next job to tackle is to make a rear deck lid grill. First thing I need to do is I've got a piece of big piece of cardboard here. I'm going to lay it over and I'm going to trim it until I'm happy with the shape and uh, basically make a template of the size of the hole. Alright, so first thing I did is I measured out the rough width of what this is. Thankfully, after laying the cardboard edge on, it's actually straight either side because it could have been curved or wobbly, but uh, a straight line is the uh, the shape of the grill, which makes it much easier for me. And it sits in just nicely against the ducktail. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to this far end and I'm going to trim it until I can get it just the right shape. Okay, so I'm happy with this end of the cardboard trimming, but the issue I had is I flipped it over and tried to use it on the opposite end, and being that this is a ducktail spoiler that has, these things have been molded a million times, it's not exactly the same on this end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to overlap it a bit, make sure I've got plenty of space, and now I'll trim this other end to get it to the exact right shape I want from this end, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, now I've got both ends looking exactly what I want, but obviously it's too long, so um, all I'm going to do is cut it in half, and then overlap them to where I want, stick it together, and there's my template. Alright, so this is what I got from my local steel supplier. I couldn't, uh, I was pretty limited locally with what I could find, but this stuff uh, should do the job nicely. It's, this is actually galvanised. Um, Stainless mesh would have been better, or um, aluminium, but uh, this is what I've got, and I think it'll do the job nicely. So I'm gonna take my template and mark it onto this and cut it out. All right, before I fit it, I've cleaned it all up with some Prepsol, and I'm going to paint it, because 
It's galvanized, it's not that pretty as it is. I tried polishing it and it doesn't polish very well. So my, uh, my idea is I'm going to clean it up and, uh, and I'm gonna paint it with some of this chrome paint. Now I've used this sort of stuff before. It's not chrome, but it, on something like this, it is gonna be chrome enough. And it's designed to go straight over the bare metal. So um, I could have gone black. But I'm thinking with the black stripes, it will not really work very well. So um, yeah, so let's start painting this up. All right, now this is painted and it actually looks quite good. It's quite uh, shiny and exactly what I'm, what I'm looking for. So uh, I need to now go around and put an edge trim around it. And I got on eBay and I bought this edge trim. It was very cheap. It's just a simple uh, sort of U-shaped edge trim that sort of will clip over the edge, so I'll run around and put this all the way around the edge and then we'll have a nice, neat uh, trim panel to put on my car. All right, I've got my grill and it's just a little bit too big, but I'm not too concerned because I can go around and I can trim it up and get it right. Okay, so next step is to mount this grill into the duct tape. I could use just uh, nuts and bolts, but uh, as many of you know, I'm not a huge fan of doing that. I like my captive nuts, so what I'll be doing is I'll be going through and putting my uh, captive nuts into ducktail so I can bolt directly to it and I don't have to stuff around and hold it and yeah, nice and neat. Okay, and that's all done. As you can see there, quite quick and simple. Underneath the bolts, I used some rubber grommets out of my rubber grommet pack to give it uh, spacing and also to insulate it off of the back so it shouldn't rattle. So um, that's done there. Let's uh, move back to the front. Okay, so this grill at the front is um, presents a slightly different challenge. Similar sort of concept I'm gonna go through. Uh, one of the main differences is I'm going to use a different type of mesh on the front here because I need better airflow. I'm gonna use this aluminium expanded mesh which uh, should do the job nicely. Okay, so I've got my piece cut out, I've got my edge strip on it and it fits beautifully. Now, the only thing is, is I need to mount it and I'm thinking because I don't need to remove this, I'm gonna use some Sikaflex to mount it but I don't like the fact I can see some orange in there. So what I'm gonna do is go in, mask this up and paint that surround black before I glue this in and uh, leave it there. In my typical fashion, I spent all that time getting it nice and neat and tidy and everything perfect and then I stuck the thing in upside down so I had to pull it out and then I got it everywhere. So now I have to go through and clean it all up. Hi guys. Did you know that Jeff is not the first to modify a Porsche? Many have come before him and one of the best known is Roof or Woof or Ruff. Ralph was founded in 1939 as a service garage and when Alois Senior passed away in 1974, his son Alois Jr. released the first Ralph Performance Porsche in 1975. It wasn't until 1987 when they released the first Ralph CTR, better known as the Yellowbird, that they hit the world stage. The Yellowbird was renowned as it took the title of the world's fastest production car away from the Porsche 959 and cemented its place in the Porsche vernacular. Another episode of Mail Time, and on this week's Mail Time, I have got something here, and it says on the back, the sender is RJ & Co. And I have already opened this up. Reese, who lives up in Queensland, and here's a 911 build he's been building, which is a, uh, a bit of the opposite to mine. His has been forward dated. It's a 993 GT2 style that he's actually putting an LS1 in. So there's not even a letter inside Reese, but uh, he just saw that I uh, didn't have the rubbers on my um, door handle, so he just sent me up a couple of uh, sets of door handle uh, rubbers. So thank you very much, Reese. That was uh, 
it's much, much appreciated and, uh, and uncalled for. But thank you very much. As I said, check out his channel again. It's RJ and Co. And have a look at his uh, LS1 build. On this might be a bit of incentive for Reese to actually post up another video because it's been a while, Reese. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm quite happy with how the, uh, the grills came out this week. It turned out uh, quite good. Next week, I'm not sure what I'm up to yet, but uh, we need to hope and get out of this freezing cold garage and uh, uh, move on inside. So uh, until next time, as always, please like and subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff, and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys. Ruff was fun <laughs> as a service station and service garage. Oh my God. Ruff was founded in 1939 as a service garage. And when, <laughs> is that right? Yes. <laughs> Ruff was founded in 1939 as a service station. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>